chancellor here, and he just retired, I guess, about a year and a half ago. Oh, yeah, they, they yeah, do, they yeah, 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 I'm sure. I know Alan does, yeah. Yeah, I'm in a wine group with John and Ken, so we're still working together, drinking wine. It's, it's a good field to be in. Yeah, wine. <laughs> Unfortunately, I list, missed the last one because I was in Calgary or yeah, Vancouver and they had a big thing on a Saturday in Montecito. So. Oh, yeah, there's so many wine events around here. Mm. I can't keep up. Yeah, and they have to do a different quality. Yeah, I'm going to cross this off. Okay, let's say nice to meet you. Obama talked a lot about energy last night. A lot about energy. What's that? <laughs> Obama talked a lot about energy. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Any anything that you found? Well, making statements like we're going to be oil independent is, is not realistic. It's it's a goal, but um, talked about. Uh, New renewable energy. Yeah. All the promises and all the challenges and the, everybody sitting on their hand and the Republican side and the Democrat side. It's a t our, our former government is so back with the people. Yes. Stuck. Stuck. Is right. Of these, of these uh, 
think about this talk, which is unusual in the sense that it's not about renewable energy, is that there is a hope that by getting a significant, significant fraction of the energy that is left, of the oil that is left in the ground, we can buy ourselves some time to implement Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Thank you very much, Alan, for the introduction. And um, I have to give him credit that he actually came up with the name Microbial Enhanced Oil Recovery, MEUR, a breakthrough because I met with him for lunch and he went through my stuff and you know, Alan's very thorough, so he came up with a concept and I said, looks pretty good, I'll go with it. So that's, I'll give Alan credit for the title. But what we're gonna talk about today, and if I do my job, you'll leave this room convinced that Titan has developed some technology that is a major technological breakthrough that allows the use of microbes or bacteria to recover oil that is trapped in global oil fields. And I'm not just gonna talk about the future, I'm going to talk about what we've done over the last four and a half years in some major fields with some major oil companies. I want to thank the Institute for Energy Efficiency for inviting me. I think the name is a fantastic name because you'll see in one of my slides that energy is the number one challenge of the 21st century. And I couldn't have done it all without Courtney's help. So Courtney, thank you very much for your help. She was fantastic. and. Um, I appreciate it very much. Now I'm gonna get familiar with, there we go, it works. We feel that Titan offers an innovative approach to oil recovery. And basically, to sum it all up, we're gonna find new oil where old oil has already been produced. And so it's pretty simple. And, his, and Alan's comment was right, in the ground is a lot of oil. And if we can get that oil out, safely, conveniently, and affordably, then that is the right thing to do. Now, the hardest thing coming to a meeting like this is gauging the audience and the knowledge of the audience as to what you know about oil, MUR. So I'd like to get a raise of hands on two subjects. Who in the audience had heard of MUR before you got your uh, release? Okay, okay, let me ask you the next question now. Maybe I'll just walk away after the, after the next one if there's no hand. Uh, how about peak oil? Uh, oh, that's good. Because five years ago, less than 10% of the people in the world knew anything about peak oil. And today, over 50% understand peak oil and believe it's for real. I happen to be one of those people. So my mission today is to share with you some of my personal thoughts and insights on the global oil world and how Titan is helping to address the shortage of oil the world is experiencing today through its revolutionary, and I use the word revolutionary because it is, MUR technology called the Titan process. Obviously, driving over here, many thoughts went through my head as to, am I really gonna talk in the sequence that is important? But very important to know is that today, I can make the statement after 86 years, thousands of efforts to use microbes to recover oil, thousands of people to make it work, to the best of my knowledge, Titan is the only company that has successfully allowed the use of microbes to recover oil at an affordable cost and, and safely. So that's a big statement, but uh, we're ready to back it up and I'm gonna show you some things that I think will prove that. Hopefully what I'll be discussing today will be helpful and an encouragement to anyone who wants to know more about oil, the oil industry, and in particular, MEOR. My presentation today is not a sales pitch on Titan. What I'd like is that one of you, or two of you, or a few of you to walk out of the room and say, my God, I never understood this about the oil industry, and you'll be a hot subject at the next cocktail party so you can tell people all about the oil industry and the things that uh, I'm gonna talk about. 
So the $64 question is, can microbes, that is bacteria, successfully recover oil trapped in global oil fields? The simple answer is yes, if, a big if, they are used correctly. What I miss in my presentation maybe we'll cover in the question and answer period that will follow. Now I'm sure all of you are looking up here and say, why is a guy my age involved with a new startup in the oil industry? Six years ago I had no clue about how oil was stored in the ground. But I met somebody along the way that made an impact on my life. I was considering joining a Swiss company, an investment company, and I also was considering retiring six years ago. But I met a guy named Ken Garbino. Oh, let me uh, uh, stop here. This is how I look at what we are all about. Titan's MEOR technology provides a bridge to the future, allowing the world more time to find and invent alternative sources of renewable energy to replace oil. Two things were responsible for me to be brought in contact with Titan in March of 2005. The first was I decided to attend a business conference at the Libero Theater at the last minute while I was contemplating should I take the job in Switzerland or should I retire. And I decided to go and spend the day. So I called them up and registered. The second had to do with a chance meeting I met Ken Garbino who was the founder and chairman of Titan. Now this is what happened. And for those of you looking for maybe ideas about your life and career changes and direction, this was a major event in my life. Cannon was standing outside the Libero Theater as I was because we didn't like the presentation going on. And I said to Ken, you're not from Santa Barbara. And he said, how do you know that? I said, because you're dressed too well. He says, where do you think I'm from? I said, you look like a guy from Beverly Hills. And he was. He says, who are you? Now, this is a idea that anybody that goes to a technical meeting or any kind of a meeting, in my vest pocket, I had a summary of my business education and experience. And Ken, when Ken said, who are you? I gave it to him. I said, read it, and I'll be here all day, so if you want to talk, get hold of me. So he came back at the end of the meeting and he said, would you come down to Beverly Hills and spend a day with me? And I said, yes. So I went down, spent the day. He gave me about this much information, said, read that, and if you're interested, give me a call. So I went home. I spent two months doing due diligence on his technology. On the surface, reading it, I said it's the biggest thing I'd ever seen, but like most things, they don't always happen. So after I read everything and I got to the point of wanting to make a decision, I asked Ken if he was a golfer, and he said yes. So I invited him up to Santa Barbara to play golf with me. Five weekends in a row we played golf. And through that process, I got to know him. And every night we went out, every Saturday night we went out, I took my wife along because she has a way of sniffing out losers faster than I can. So on the fifth time that Ken came up, he laid an employment agreement down in front of me and said, uh, please join me. And I said, okay. And I signed the agreement. And he said, aren't you going to read it? And I said, no, I want in because the due diligence I had done convinced me that I wanted to be involved with Titan. This was something really special that's going to happen. Now, this isn't too bad for a guy six years ago that didn't know anything about the oil industry, so I stand here today trying to tell you a little bit and for me, educating you a little bit of what I've learned over the last six years. Now, a little bit of history. At lunch, Ken Garbino told me this story about koalas. He said koalas can eat eucalyptus leaves that are poisonous to human beings and not die. And I said, well, I never knew that. Okay, that sounds cool. And he said, but the most important thing is koalas are the genesis of Titan's technology that was developed 20 years ago, the very, very beginning. And it was done by uh, a guy named uh, Bob Murphy, who said, if koalas can 
eat eucalyptus leaves and not die, it must be something inside their system. It was microbes that was digesting the, the leaves. And that was the genesis of the technology. Now, the guy that got first involved in doing this worked at uh, the Cambria University in Australia. Bob Carroll gave the university some money to um, do a research program, the brother uh, on using microbes. Alan Sheehy, who is now our chief scientist, and he's a microbiologist, said he took the project on, and after about five months, he went back to the guy that he reported to and said, I don't want to be involved because I don't know where this is going. And so they took him off it, and they gave it to another guy, and he died, so they gave it back to Alan. And Alan told me one day that he was sitting in his chair on the beach, and he finally realized that the concept of using microbes had value. You're looking at the very first oil well in the United States in Titusville, Pennsylvania in, 19, in 1859. Now, where are we going? This is a oil platform today costing maybe $800 million or more. So it's come a long way. So let's go over some of the things about the oil industry because you should know what this industry is all about. 40% of the world's total energy comes from oil. Approximately 50% of this energy is used for transportation fuel. Coal, gas, wind, solar, nuclear, thermal, hydro, etc. are other forms of energy, but nothing comes close to oil. There are over 70,000 oil fields in the world. 80% of these oil fields are going through production declines of about six to nine percent per year. In the case of the Mexico Cantrell field, four years ago, it was the third largest field. It has been going through a decline of 15 percent per year and is no, longer a, 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 is no longer a major exporter of oil to the United States. To give you a feeling of the size of what oil fields are all about, the Guavar field in Saudi Arabia is the world's largest. It started in 1951. It's 170 miles by 19 miles and thousands of feet deep. And it produces 5 million barrels of oil per day. And it's been doing it for over 50 years. Staggering to, to think that you can get that much oil out of a field for that long period of time. Oil has been the engine of the world for the past 153 years. There is no question about that. The world needs more affordable oil. It will never run out of oil anytime soon, but the oil that we'll have in the future will be too expensive for people to use. One of the things that Alan Higgard said to me, gosh, four years ago, we should not burn oil. Oil should be used to making the 300,000 consumer products that are made from oil. It was estimated at the big, very beginning in 1859, there were about three trillion barrels of oil that were recoverable, leaving about seven million trapped and unrecoverable. And this challenge continues today. Global unrecoverable oil today is about 6.2 trillion barrels of oil with a market value of over $600 trillion. This is based upon $100 oil. Now the price of oil has gone up and down, but it's, today is about $95. A 10% improvement of recoverable oil is a realistic objective. 620 billion barrels of oil with a market value of $6.2 trillion. A frame of reference. In July 2008, the price of oil reached $147. And the prices of oil are going to go up in the future. In 2007, I bet one of our advisory board members that the price of oil would go to $100 by the end of 2007. On December 31st, 2007, the price of oil was $99.90. And I lost my $50 bet. So he calls me up. That's Garrett Chang. He says, would you like to double the bet? And I said, yeah. And he says, what do you think is going to happen in 2008? I said, I think oil is going to go to $150. It went to $147. And so I lost again. 
But the point is I really didn't lose because I was keeping track of what was happening in the oil industry. The oil industry is the largest industry in the world. Approximately three trillion dollars of revenue per year. For frame of reference, the total electronics industry, hardware and software, is estimated to be one trillion dollars. Approximately 35,000 oil fields of the 70,000 that are in the world are, will be or are under water flood. Water flood is a prerequisite to using Titan's MUR technology because it's the carrier of the microbes that are going to help recover the oil. Approximately 31 billion oil, barrels of oil are consumed each year, or five, or 85, I'm sorry, 85 million barrels of oil per day. Now this was a something in a book I read. Globally, 1,000 barrels of oil are consumed every second, 24-7. Oil is used to produce transportation fuel, gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, kerosene, and, and others, as well as over 300,000 consumer products. And again, oil should not be burned. United States, with less than 5% of the world population, uses about 25% of the world's oil. China and India are the two of the fastest growing countries with increasing oil needs. If things don't change, if we don't find a way to get more oil at an affordable price, it is conceivable a global war could evolve around oil. For every four barrels of oil consumed today, only one new barrel is being discovered. So as Alan said at the very beginning, today, approximately 35% of the original oil in place is recovered during the primary and secondary oil recovery stages, leaving about 60%, 65% of the oil in place unrecoverable. Now, peak oil. There are three definitions that you can use. You have peak oil when demand for oil can no longer be met with an adequate supply. You have peak oil when maximum oil production has been reached. And you have peak oil when 50% of the original oil in place has been consumed. If you think back on the slide I showed you, the first oil field in Titusville, Pennsylvania, was 1859. In the late 1880, 1850s, Whaling went out of fashion because there weren't any more oil, uh, more, more whales to make the oil that was used for heating and for light throughout the world. So this was a uh, moment in time, a, uh, something that happened. It's like a just in time oil was discovered to replace whale oil. So let's get to the, what I think is the most important part is today primary recovery recovers 15 to 20 percent of the oil in place and the recovery is when you drill the well and the pressure that mother nature has built up pushes the oil up and you see it in movies and you see it demonstrated that the oil is gushing out very shortly after that happens you have a condition where production slows down and the typical probably mandatory process used today is to use water flooding where it's applicable is used to keep the pressure up in the oil reservoir and recover more oil and this re can recover 10 to 15 percent so if you add the 20 and the 15 you have 35. so today we have enhanced oil recovery all types of it and up to 35 percent we feel can be recovered and that's i won't go through but jack gas injection chemical thermal and other processes and down at the bottom microbial enhanced oil recovery a subset of EOR it is our best guess that three to ten percent of the trapped oil can be recovered yes okay very good water, water flooding is where 
<coughs> water is actually injected into the field when production has gone down. And it keeps the pressure up in the reservoir to push out more oil. And about 50% of the field are, can, can use water flooding. 50% cannot, of course. And the, we, we absolutely require water flooding for our technology to work. So that leaves us around 35,000 uh, oil fields that are good prospects for our, our technology. Now, um, Daniel Jurgen gave a talk here not too long ago. Daniel Jurgen has written two books that I highly recommend that you find and read. The first one was called The Prize. It was written in the early 2000s. And his second and latest book is called The Quest. I have read both books and I highly recommend them. There was a quote in The Prize by John D. Rockefeller that he used before every meeting that stuck with me. And it goes like this. A wise owl lived in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why aren't we like that old bird? So not a bad suggestion to work on D. Rockefeller. OK, now we're going to talk about MEOR. There are basically two technologies. Uh, the invasive is our word. Invasive MEOR is doing things like adding chemicals, nutrients, and microbes from the surface into an oil reservoir. Almost without exception, the results have been hit or miss and generally unsuccessful. This unsuccessful has made our task at Titan so difficult because the people in the oil industry don't believe that MEOR can work. And so we have to prove that to them. Well, I'm going to show you some proof that we have, that we present to the companies. And then we're now adding a lot of oil companies. Titan's MEOR, we inject a specific nutrient formula, a cocktail, that has been formulated for specific microbes living in a specific oil field reservoir. This is the Titan process. It is very specific. We must, and we must identify the microbes in the reservoir. And there are about 33,000 microbes that exist in the world. Most of them are very friendly. Of the 33,000, we're only interested in a handful. And if we can find those microbes present in the samples that we take, then we have a very good chance of recovering the oil. I think I've been through this. Titan's process is suitable for both onshore and offshore applications. No new facilities are required for either Titan or the field owner or the operator. Titan expects its MAOR process to become part of the normal development of oil fields around the world. Increases current oil production and ultimate recovery from oil fields, low cost and effective. We have enough experience that shows that we can recover oil for six to ten dollars per incremental barrel of oil. It is suitable for onshore and offshore. No new facilities are required for the field owner to desire to de deliver the desired result. It's complex science, but simple application. On the left is a typical oil field that has been drilled, and you can see the, the oil tower where the oil comes out. And on the right-hand side is how oil water is pumped into the same field and now we're pulling it out of a recovery field on the right. I'm going to get to another slide here. Here we go. Titan's process is pretty simple. It's a five-step process. The first process find it. There's a three-page questionnaire that anybody who is going to consider using our technology is requested to fill out. 
and it covers all the aspects of the uh, target field. So if that process is positive and it goes through by our technical people, a laboratory analysis of the core of the process is done. And what that means is that we go out and take samples from the oil field, oil and water, bring it back to our labs, we analyze it to see whether the microbes that we're interested in exist. We then take and put into beakers, about 40 of them, different combinations of nutrient formulas. And after about two months, we're able to determine which nutrients had the most positive effect on the microbes. And that selection is done by Alan Sheehy and our technical people. The next step is then to make up a batch in a tote. And a tote is 42 gallons of nutrients. It's taken to the injection well on the field where the samples were taken. And the whole purpose of the in situ microbial response analysis is to determine whether the response in the field is the same response that we got in our lab. If that is positive, then a pilot is done where we actually then put a lot more nutrient formula into that same field. And the ideal situation is when we then get to a full field or expanded pilot. Now I'm going to show you something that very, very few people have ever seen. On the left is a droplet of oil in an oil reservoir. Alan Sheehy took these pictures. And the one in the middle shows how the, maybe I can do this better by, you can see how it starts to get deformed. It's the microbes are causing this oil droplet here to break. And then the piece comes off and it leaves. And it's small enough then to escape from the pore space in the oil reservoir. This is why our technology works. This is something only Titan does. Now, historically, MEOR has been linked to reservoir plugging and information and formation damage. This is the problem of 86 years of past failures. For the four for the past four years plus, the new Titan process has caused no plugging, no production upsets, no oil treating treatment or treating problems, and no change in oil characteristics. Microbes can reside in extreme conditions for millions of years without oxygen. But the right specific nutrient formulas can be manipulated to perform valuable in situ work. We actually put the bugs to work. Titan's MEOR technology has been successfully applied at high temperatures of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And we've also been very successful in a wide range of API oil gravity from 16 to about 35. Now, for every field that we do, we constantly measure the results. And I picked this one particular slide. Obviously, it's a good slide. It shows oil production on the left. It shows the where the treatment is done and the reaction on the oil production. And then a second treatment. A typical field will be treated three times a year. The cost per treatment is about $30,000. A very important part of the process is water. Water is very expensive and you're talking in some cases millions and millions of gallons of water. So if the water can go down and the oil get, can go up in production and you have the best situation. This is another field in Los Angeles. Shows the pre-treatment and the post-treatment. These are actual customer results. Now here's a chart that shows all the things that we've done, but here what the summary means. We have done 18 fields, number of treatments 98, total number of treatments delivered to the wells 183, 
Average oil production increase on treated wells has been 102%. Overall success injection in producing wells has been 88%. So we've been 88% successful. Payout for the clients based on the cost series is 288% return. Estimated cost per incremental barrel is six to ten dollars. One of our customers gave a talk a few years ago where somebody put their hand up and says, what is the return on using Titan's technology? And they said, we get a return every 17 days, I think it was, something like that. So how have our customers benefited? Number of treatments. Number of treatments, 183. Titan charge, $4,425,000. Incremental barrels of oil, 190,000. Incremental income for the customer that's using our technology has been 17 million. We get four and a half million, they get 17 million. And they estimated incremental revenue increase after cost for the customers, 288%. We share this information with anybody who is interested in our technology. So, where are we today? The cost of energy per barrel of incremental oil equivalent. At the top is Titan at six to ten dollars. Middle East oil, and on on down the list you can see. So Titan's cost per incremental barrel is the lowest in the industry. So what are we looking for in 2012? You can see the, how many treatments we did in 2007, 2008, 2011, and what we're gonna do in 2012. The president of Apache Corporation on, on January 16th of this year had a message in his uh, annual report to the shareholders that said, unfortunately, existing oil and gas reservoirs are diminishing at a rapid rate. Large fields are becoming increasingly difficult to locate and a great deal of effort is placed to recover more of what has already been found. Discovered unproduced reserves present a huge opportunity to increase existing supplies and new additional recovery technologies. Techniques have become available to extract these minerals in places and ways that were unknown even a few years, short years ago. This is what our world is today. Our, our, our challenge is to get the message now out to oil companies. And we're doing that. Titan expects to become a routine part of oil field developments and a major part of the industry's EOR efforts. I'm gonna stop here. Questions? Yes. The people that could better answer that, but I'll give you the answer that I think is the correct answer, is that we have had no problems in the last four and a half years doing all the treatments in all the fields. None whatsoever. The major problem has been in the past with MEUR is plugging of the oil channels, but there has been no problem with the contamination or the problem with any disaster that's caused down in the reservoir. None, zero. Oh, eventually they die. They die. Yeah. Uh, the, the micros, when they're found, they eat the nutrient formula, they grow, they go through mitosis, one becomes two, two becomes four, and so forth. But after they're through doing their work, they actually die. So The trick here is, as I understand it, to find out what's down there. There are uh, microbes all oil. So what they've done is understand that you don't have to inject the microbes that are already there. They're naturally living there. So they take a sample and they use a, a matrix of different temperatures and salt contents and this and that to find the optimal 
optimum growth conditions for microbes that are in that oil is the optimum nutrient for that. Then they inject it. All that is in the water. Microbes are hydrophilic, and they're in the water, and they're very happy. And they grow in numbers enormously. Then start to run out. They become hydrophobic. They go to the surface of the oil because there, there is nutrient there. And a surface roughening occurs that you saw in that one photograph, and some kind of an instability that I don't understand that causes the droplets to stick out. And then the process, and then it comes out, and then it's over. And then you re-inject. So the really neat thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the, from the business point of view, no capex, no searching for oil. You already know where it is. There's been places where it was already discovered. The science, on the other hand, I think is not very well understood, just superficially understood. What causes this breakup of of the droplets and what causes the increase in the flow. But there's very little doubt uh, from the numbers that it works uh, and some uh, large well companies uh, are trusting all this process and allowing it to be implemented in their, in their orders. Some very large oil companies are using our technology. We can't disclose it because we signed a confidential non-disclosure agreement. Although they continue to use our technology and expand on their fields. So the technology works. This is the major part of the story where everybody else in the past has failed. And there's been thousands of efforts with many thousands of people trying to make microbes work. Nobody has succeeded. And we believe we're the only company today that's done that. Now, will there be other competition? We'll have to wait and see. What we think is know-how and trade secrets are far more important than patents. Right. What's the limit the efficiency you mentioned it, of uh, extraction? You mentioned that there are more oil in the ground than you're able to, I, I hear, to take out, if I understood. Well, there's always oil that won't come out. It's trapped. And everybody in the world with EOR and MEOR is going after the 65%. If I was to pick a number, I'd say 30% will be ultimately recovered over time by all the EORs. We, we're, not the, we're not the answer to it. We're a part of the program for recovering oil at an affordable cost, safely. Water flow. It takes time. It's a slow process. It takes time. That's why you're showing the process of something like a new uh, and, and if you notice, the increase did not occur at the step point when it was first uh, uh, fully occurred. The most frustrating. The water flood carries the microbes into the oil reservoir where the oil droplets are trapped in pore spaces called inside the reservoirs. And they actually get on top of the oil droplet and, and you saw it from the, and break it into smaller droplets so they can escape. The thing that I had to get used to is how small everything is. I just couldn't comprehend that you could put 40 million microbes on the head of a pin, but you can. And uh, so we, we use microbes to recover oil safely.
consider your scientific program to uh, look at the in, in only one light and prove that the system is what it is. Or you could just look at one. Well, I asked Alan Sheehy, who was our microbiologist and chief scientist, where are we on the scale of development of our technologies? That we're in the five to ten percent range, best right now. We have a long ways to go. Now the good news is he was here last week and he met with Alan. And then I went out to dinner with him. He, he confided in me he wants to move to Santa Barbara from Australia. <laughs> Not the first guy that wanted to do that. Pretty smart. So anyway, um, there's a long ways to go. But gosh, we're so proud of what we've accomplished. I mean. 86 years, nothing materially happened with M.E. Warren. That's guy, why the guy such a bad reputation. I remember I met with T. Boone Pickens. I asked him about M.E. Warren. He said, oh, bad technology. It doesn't work. Okay. That's kind of where the industry has come from. And all changes in the oil industry take a long time. Brian Marcotte, our CEO, came from Unical after 37 years. He says it takes 20 years for any new technology to have a major breakthrough in the oil industry. But we have had a breakthrough. We've got the facts that we're showing for the very first time of what our stuff does. Yes. So how much water are you using? A lot. A lot. An oil field will take millions of barrels or gallons of water to get the pressure up. And what we do is we inject our formula into an injection well and it gets carried along into the reservoir. Are talking about a few barrels? Of, of nutrients? water? Nutrients? nutrients? Can be as many as 40 totes, and a tote is 42 gallons. So Oh, very, yeah, highly diluted. But it has to be done every three months to keep the oil moving in the reservoir. And when you, and if you, the, we have, let's see, I can mention a couple names. Benico is one of our customers. The reason I can mention them because they've written a, what they call a Society of Petroleum Engineering technical paper that substantiates what they have experienced using our technology. Husky Energy up in Calgary has written two SBE papers about their experience. And in their paper, they say the cost per incremental barrel is $6 per barrel. And now, so we're kind of breaking out of our mode is that we've been in a research mode and a development mode and it takes a long time. When we, when we started treating four and a half years ago, it took months, years to find out the results that I just showed you on the screen. But we're very encouraged that we're on the right path.
Well, surfactants are used. Right, and that's why I'm kind of curious as to how, I guess, a surfactant doesn't work in most cases. Well, there's two things. Does it work and how much does it cost? Okay. You know, and what the results have been. So uh, do we keep the real technology under wraps? You bet your life we do. <laughs> we, do not, we do not tell any, we do not apply for patents anymore. Because the know-how, we have broken through, we're 86 years of work, nobody broke through, we are breaking through and we have the results. Now we can go into an oil company and say, These are, this is what people who use our technology are doing. It's so powerful. I, I think it's clear to everyone here, but uh, in the oil industry, the capital expense of doing anything, not cost a billion, it's just has to be something like this. And so when there is no capital expense, and when return on investment is 17 Please. Does the water have to be fresh water? No, it can be all kinds of water. It can be fresh water, sea water. It can be uh, ta water, table water in the ground. It could be just about any kind of water. But a lot of water is used, and it has to be recycled. Uh, how do you make any resistance to this part of the process from any of the oil companies? How do you make any resistance? Any resist has there been any resistance? <laughs> okay, this is a very good question. Two, two answers to that. One is that uh, oil companies move very slow, okay? And they have not invented here syndrome in their head. They got tens of thousands of scientists and they can't figure out one, why our one guy found the key, the lot and lock to get microbes to work. So that's one. And the other one is that they, they hold back, they wait to see. And now, right now, they've got their focus on unconventional oil. Have you heard that term? Unconventional oil is using things like tar sands up in Canada or using uh, uh, shale oil in New York, Pennsylvania, where they're fracking. This is a very hot subject today. And the oil companies are spending hundreds of billions of dollars. And why are they doing that? Because they need more oil. They need it at an affordable cost because they're a publicly held company. Can you imagine if they said to their shareholders, we don't know where we're going to get our oil in the future? So they're trying everything. It's a marketing sales job, education job. We're raising some funding. I'm not here to raise funding. We're raising some meaningful funding, and we're going to then do PR, press releases, and advertising, and things of that nature. But this is a, one of the most major developments in the oil industry. And the people that become our users tell us, you guys have got it. It works. So the fact that oil, large oil companies will eventually come around, but not right now. And they're, they're really not our target. We don't really spend a whole lot. A large oil company in our way of thinking is a $2 billion, $3 billion annual revenue of a company. We're not a Chevron. or a, we, just, we don't get after that. Yes. I'm going to hire you. You're yeah. asking all the right <laughs> questions. <laughs> It broadcasts out into the reservoir. A reservoir can be uh, 100 acres and, thou and hundreds of uh, injection wells and 100 producing wells or 400 producing wells. A uh, husky up in Canada has a field with 600 wells on it.
But rest assured that the microbes that we're going after are known and specified by our chemists and our microbiologists. And the formula they developed are specific to that, to that microbe. And I know you want to know what everybody wants. I, don't, I, I, I frankly, I don't want to know how it works because I don't want to end up in Saudi Arabia being tortured. You don't want to know, know the Titan formula. Um, I want to know how it works. I, I'd, love, I'd love to study the process, but uh, maybe someday we can. Alan met with Alan Sheehy, and they got along just great. And Alan Sheehy was so impressed with Alan's capture of the concept of what we do. But uh, I'll give you an example. I, Alan came back to my house, and, and we were sitting there, and he called up a file. And he showed me a screen that looked like little things all over the screen. And I said, what do you see? He says, I see microbes that would be compatible with our technology. He says, you can? He says, yeah, I can probably pick them up vi visually. And they come in pairs. So, um, so the technology is solid, it works, and now our future is ahead of us. We, th we see a great future for us. Anybody that can recover oil for $9 a barrel, 6 to $10, yes? Isn't the key to what you're doing is that microbe has to break that oil down? Because when you do water flooding, water, as we all know, causes a channel, okay? So when you flood these fields, the water keeps following the path of least resistance. So once they pump water through there, after a while, the water keeps going the same way and there's no more oil that it's and then coming into so contact. That's the point. So that's it's coming what happens. That's, that's what's coming. That's the point. Right. So the point what of contact is that when these oil droplets, this, the term for this is formula. I'm an expert. I don't know anything. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> He's the very modest. Is, the term is permeability. Okay. And you're describing a situation where there are clear channels for the water to flow through, and no and and no impediment. And so no oil comes out. After so it's made the original contact right. with the water what flooding, happens, it floods the field, it pushes it out. Okay, so there's no right. more oil. And what happens, contact. at least I am told, is that when the oil droplets break off, because of the interaction with the microbes in the right. hydro, hydrophobic state, they block the pores, and the permeability for water goes down, and oil starts coming out again. That, that's the essential. The bacteria comes in contact with oil that's already trapped, but the water is in contact, then, okay? So at that point, it releases it, okay? The it oil opens field the because it's a smaller. Mm -hmm. When the permeability of the water is so high that it doesn't have to carry anything. So the whole idea, if you want to, and you're smart, is to find a way to. to to replace, uh, bring the permeability of the water down so that oil will be produced. And that's what, this, that's what the evidence shows is going on. So then what drives Titan as opposed to, let's say, Glory Energy, you know, which is the Kleiner Perkins GE joint venture that's doing the I same thing. There's another company called Glory Energy, okay, which is the Kleiner Perkins and General Electric joint venture, which does, right. you know, MERR also. And so the secret it has to be, and again, you know, this is, you know, where your contact point with that oil is and what you're doing differently that's causing that to break down. I mean, you showed the little slide there, but, you know, and you said you don't understand the technology, and I, doctor, I assume you do or don't. Don't get him started on Gloria oil. Okay. No, I'm going to make one comment, though, is very much, you know, we think competition will be very good for the industry. That more people will talk about MEOR. And the case is, who has the best will win out. Now, Glory Energy is a very viable company, very substantial, heavily funded. However, their technology up to about two months ago was putting in nutrients and, and microbes from the surface into the reservoir. Now, they are putting the nutrients into the reservoir, but they don't specify what the, what the, uh, the um, microbes are. How they're doing it, we don't. We have no idea how they're doing. How how their system really can work. It doesn't work as well. But anyway, it's a very. But the competition is very good for an industry. If you don't have other people using it, it doesn't become a viable concept. Now I brought along a, 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 a corpse sample.
from an oil field. This is only 290 million years old. It's sandstone, and you can see the sands crushed together, and oil is within, is, is trapped in there. But if you want to see it, you can come up and see it, but it, it's a very interesting. Well, thanks, Paul. I think we should thank you. Thank you. Thank you.